long, 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 long pause day for your boy. But we are here. We are live. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Blake Rafino. This is Are You Serious Sports. Hope all of you are making it a good one. We know that we are as well. The juice is gone. I, I got to admit, man, o I think every time the name O.J. Simpson comes up, I think of two things. Obviously, if the glove doesn't fit, you got to acquit. And then number two, I think about the Dave Chappelle skit or the Dave Chappelle comedy special of his experience being around O.J. Simpson. Here's what I'll say two things. Number one is I am not going to parade the man's death. I don't parade anybody's death unless you're someone, and some people will probably put him in this category, like when Osama bin Laden died. I was pretty happy with that. Saddam Hussein, you know, world leaders that are horrible. Th that is different, a different situation in my opinion. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. But I'm just not going to go on social media parading that the guy died. You know what else I'm not going to do? Make jokes about it. Like, Twitter has made people dumber. Social media has made people dumber sometimes. Like what 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 goes through somebody's mind to say hell gained uh, a, a a good running back today? You don't know that man's heart. You don't know what the, the God will do. You have no clue. It's it just it's crazy. But I do think about the o, the OJ Simpson Dave Chappelle meeting up. But him meeting a couple of uh, or meeting OJ Simpson, that's got to be the funniest shit. So I, I'll admit something. Dave Chappelle is my is to me, he is the funniest comedian in the world to me. Everything that Dave Chappelle does, I laugh at. I, I think of I watch his specials like on rerun sometimes. There are some nights, like after a show, if we don't have I don't have anything else going on, I'll turn on Dave Chappelle special because i think he's that funny um but yeah oj simpson has passed uh, one one thing you got to give him the arguably one of if not in the 80s 70s 80s one of the biggest sports icons in the country maybe even the world was oj simpson so it's unfortunate i feel bad for his family i feel bad for his kids um i mean because look man that was somebody's dad and some one of his kids tweeted it out, so I I, I do uh, feel bad for that. I I did see this. Paul's up. Martin says OJ died the same day that Ford recalled the Bronco. The timing is nothing but divine. It was pretty funny. You got to admit it, it, it. It's pretty funny. Uh, Chance Babin says Tony Vitello is licking his chops as a wounded tiger limps in. Hope this weekend flips the script. Um, so yeah, let's talk about what we're actually going to talk about in the show tonight. I will go on a Rafino's rants. You're going to have to bear with me before we talk about some LSU, okay? Because I do think today was a very bad day for college football. Because with the OJ Simpson stuff. They put out a message today about OJ Simpson, yet took Reggie Bush's Heisman trophy away. Like, are we joking? Like, are we joking? That's gotta be the biggest like miss that you can have. You're going to celebrate OJ, but not give Reggie his, his Heisman Trophy back. It's so stupid. Brian Kelly at his press conference today will break some of that stuff down. Obviously, he said today, only thing that we're going after in the portal is defensive tackles. We're going to touch on that. I do think that Brian Kelly could be persuaded, but maybe he can't. Maybe he's playing. He's bluffing. Who knows? We will touch on that as well. We'll do a full Tennessee baseball breakdown. We might talk about the Masters and as you know, as we do every Tuesday, Thursday, we'll go around, ask questions, hashtag ask Blake, thoughts, questions, concerns. OJ Simpson's parents are from Shreveport, says John Sibley Butler. I did not know that. Uh, Marvin Mackey says, news outlets ESPN was not right 
at all covering him. Covering who? Covering OJ? They covered it all day today. I'm sitting there trying to watch the Masters all day today, and all they want to talk about is OJ Simpson. And I understand why. I understand why. Uh, Rob Boudreaux says, go back in Dave's show, man. That was great. Yeah, and the story about how it got taken away from him um, is crazy. NZ on Facebook says, this world is sometimes cruel. We have to have feelings for others in our walk of life. Go Tigers. Herman Cortez Jr. Good to have you here. Oh, I see it. Herman Cortez Jr. How about that? Charles Matters on YouTube says, I think today has answered the question what it would have been like if there was social media back in the 90s. You know, that's a really interesting... Damn, Charles, that's actually very interesting. I think that that's a really good take. Like, what if... Uh, uh, NFL player would, well, I mean, Henry Ruggs wasn't really big enough and he got in a car accident. Like if the OJ trial in the nineties would have happened in today's society, God, God bless it. It'd be worse than P Diddy, man. And by the way, I got a question that I have been asking myself for a couple of days now. Uh, maybe a week now. When Boosie said just went to New York City, hooked up with P. Diddy, what did he mean in that rap song? Just flew to New York City, hooked up with P. Diddy. What I, can we get a definition of that? Of like what he meant hooking up with P. Diddy? Would not have been good. But I agree. Charles matters uh with that comment. It's so true. So freaking true. Uh, Greg Porsche says, I barely knew OJ died. I really don't watch the news. Yeah, that that's another thing. Yep, he passed away from cancer. What's crazy is about a month ago, he said that he was either in remission or something like that. But guess what? OJ lied. Who would have ever thought that he would have lied? But look, man, I think our justice system is, just, you know, I, he was acquitted. So it is what it is. All right. Got lots to talk about. Let's talk about our good friends over at betonline.ag, our good friend Tyler Alexander over at LPT Realty, and our good friends over at J&J Exterminating. But I do need to talk about this because this is the last time that we're going to be able to talk about it before the event happens. For our last couple of nights now, we have talked about our good friend Tyler Alexander and his mom, Christy Hunt. On Saturday at 10.30 a.m. at Oak Point in Watson, they are doing a $10 plate uh, jambalaya benefit dinner to help Christy get surgery because she is uh, going through Parkinson's. Her uh, 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 situation or what she has been going through has gotten a lot worse here recently, and Tyler and his family are asking for our help, and we are going to help him. I am going to make a donation. Uh, I, I, I ask you and plead for you to help us out here with Christy Right here on the screen, if you're on YouTube or if you're on podcast, I'm sorry, I'll read it out to you. But Christy, K R I S T I slash Hunt slash 17 is her Venmo. Go get your plate, man. You could be going to the LSU uh, spring game on Saturday. Hop on over to Watson, go get your plate at Oak Point, and then come back for the game. It helps a good cause. They're going to be trying to raise, or raise more awareness for Parkinson's, and they really need our assistance. So go over there and do it. We greatly appreciate y'all doing that. Let's talk about our good friends over at Bet Online. Stay with us. We got lots to talk about. LSU, can they actually win this series against Tennessee? We talk about all that next. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events with the first to market odds in lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live, in-game betting, props, and futures. Head on over to BetOnline today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's BELIEVE50, B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag, betonline.ag. 
Ag. He will sell your house and find you a new. Well, Tyler's the man. He's here for you. If you want to buy or sell, well, it's not too late. Dial nine five five zero 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 eight. Just call nine five five zero 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 eight. Y'all call Tyler. He'll shoot you straight. Louisiana is unique. The food, the festivals, even the bugs. No, not mud bugs. Unwanted bugs like these. The ones you don't want crawling in your home or business. Trust the shield from J&J Exterminating. We've been protecting Louisiana homes for over 50 years, earning the trust of our clients because we deliver what we promise. Protect your home from pests. Get the shield from J&J Exterminating. J&J Exterminating. Yeah. We're back. All right. Let's get this thing rolling, y'all. Let's get this thing rolling, y'all. Let me check on something, make sure that because Jay Johnson released the opening lineups or pitching lineup, uh, gauge jump going on Saturday. And, yeah, that's right. Tennessee went TBA on theirs. Drew Beam will actually go on Saturday where he's been going because their Friday night guy has been getting just absolutely demolished. So maybe LSU, you know, uh, they're going with Gage Jump on Friday and they're moving home and back, I think, to go against Drew Beam because of the switch up with Tennessee. I think Jay made a right move there. We will talk uh, uh, about that later. But let me go on a quick Rafino's rant. Okay, this is not LSU related. I apologize. But I, I think this, is, this has got to be said for all of college athletics and sports. Today, the Heisman Trophy and the people who run the Heisman Trophy on the passing of O.J. Simpson put out a statement uh, today in reference to the passing of the Jews. Now, I am going to read you that quote here very quickly from the Heisman Trophy about O.J. Simpson. They said the Heisman Trophy trust mourns the passing of the 1968 Heisman Trophy winner, O.J. Simpson, we extend our sympathy to his family. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, positively, nothing wrong with them saying that and a passing of one of their own. I get that. I'm with it. What O.J. did in his life is thousands, millions of times worse than anything Reggie Bush did. Anything. And these are the small things in college sports and in college football in general that bug the outright shit out of me. It bugs the shit out of me that they come out with just a very subtle statement that the Heisman uh, uh, the Heisman uh, Trophy Trust mourns the passing of O.J. Simpson. Nothing wrong with that. But yet you, you, you were asked about, and the trust was asked about, could Reggie Bush get his Heisman Trophy back? And they said, well, we go based off of stats. Oh, so it's a stat-related thing. So then why was Marvin Harrison at the Heisman Trophy ceremony? So if, if the NCAA would enact what Reggie Bush did and that he actually played, you know that he played. You gave him the fucking trophy. Look, I'm not, I I am not an advocate for USC, but I think it's ironic that two USC running backs, one that got paid to be at USC, probably both of them, but one of them is not getting his Heisman because he got paid. The other one was in a murder trial, which love, you think he did it. You think he did. You think that he did commit the murder. You think he didn't commit the murder. Bottom line was is that he was he was proven innocent. But he also got in other shit and did some other crazy shit after that. Got arrested, was in jail. I, I, I just think that we have such a double standard in college football. And a lot of people think that there's going to be massive changes within the next two years. This kind of incompetency is not going to change. Guys, if they're incompetent, 
when all of this has been going on, you think once they make changes in college football, they're not going to be just as incompetent? Like, legitimately, you really think that they're not going to be incompetent after things change and they get something done with NIL? It's going to be. I just think it's a bad look on the sport. I think it's a bad look that you do that, and I know that they do that for everybody. And God God bless them. I know that they're just trying, and look, the Heisman Trust is just probably trying to do the right thing. But come on. Come on. Like Reggie Bush didn't kill anybody. Literally. That we know of, I guess. Maybe Kim Kardashian's career for a little while, but, you know. I could make the argument in my lifetime that Reggie Bush is the most dynamic overall running back or skill player that I have seen in my lifetime. I can make that argument. Pretty sure I can win it. He he was so electric fine. So good, man, at everything that he did. It's just a shame that we, like those small things happen. Hopefully, this is a stepping stone for a guy like Reggie, who, by the way, was a saint. We got the helmet right here. It just it it bugs the outright shit out of me. I don't know if it bugs you. Maybe it does. Um, Charles says, bro, the NCAA removed, uh, stat or uh, Bush's stats. And so the winner was voided. Charles, I, I, I don't, I, for me, man, I don't really care about that. So, because that's an excuse. They voided his stats. You know, his stats, you're, they have nothing to do with the NCAA, the Heisman truth, the Heisman trophy trust has no affiliation with the NCAA. None. They say that they do, but it's a lie. And if you're going to go based off of, well, his stats were taken away. So it's about stats? Well, then why was Marvin Harrison Jr. there this year? Why? I, I mean, like, don't, don't you dare tell me that, oh, well, it's the NCAA thing. No, you don't want him in there. They've blackballed him for whatever reason. They don't need the NCAA to, to have his stats. They, they don't. So, yeah. All right, Brian Kelly met with the media today. Let's get to some LSU stuff. I know that's why you're here, so let's get to it. Brian Kelly met with the media today and – Probably dropped a little bit of a, a, a bomb on LSU fans. And I got to admit, I was not expecting him to say some of the things he said today, but not in a bad way, but in where he sees uh, things will be processing. Now, what we talked about last night doesn't change. I still think five to seven guys will still transfer. I thought that they might go after another corner, might go after another running back. It looks like that they're not going to do that. Brian Kelly today in his press conference after practice said that they are only targeting or he expects, key word there, he said, I expect that the only position group that we will be going after in the transfer portal this spring portal period is defensive tackle. Let's break that down very quickly. Um, so you had, you've had a video. So you got Gio Paez from Wisconsin. Okay, to commit. You had a guy on campus from Indiana here this week, which I heard went relatively good. And there are going to be other defensive tackles that hit the portal that I'm sure that LSU will attack and go after. And again, like I do in every one of these breakdowns, I give you what I believe about the team. I think Brian Kelly's doing a great job. I think that he's got he's he's brought in an immense amount of talent. I would tell you if I felt otherwise. Here are just some things about that that I think could be happening on why he said he's only going after one position and why I don't know if it's actually 1,000% true. Because later in the press conference, he would say, you know, like we're trying to build defensive depth 
Like we got, we, we, we have found places that we're weak at and we got to go attack those places to get better. So the first sentence that Brian Kelly said in the press conference was about the defensive depth. Now that we know where we stand, we know where we have to go and attack. Then he came back and said defensive tackle, which obviously that's something that me and you talked about. But I don't think that it is the only thing and only position that he means. I know what he said about DT. I get it. I think he might be bluffing. Maybe I'm wrong. And I will retract if I'm wrong. I'm not a 1,000% sure that they don't go after a back. And I think that they are banking on the hope that Trey Holly is back in August and is able to go through the season. Now, let me talk about that very quickly. I do think that they need another back. Like, I, I 100% believe that they need to go get somebody to for only death purposes. Guys, I will remind you, and you have been on my ass all offseason or spring, Blake, stop talking about running back. I understand it. But, guys, it's a big position, and it's, it's the biggest question mark offensively that you have. Let me explain why. Guys, you got to fund another running source outside of Jane Daniels. And if you use Caleb Jackson as a bull, Caden Durham, Josh Williams, guys, having three scholarship running backs, God willing and God forbid, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, gets injured. It's not good. You can't go into a game or, God forbid, multiple games where you only have two scholarship guys. By the way, I love Josh Williams. Josh Williams was a walk-on that got himself there. He's a team leader. He's a guy that can is very serviceable. He's a, one of the – I will say this. Because of everything he's meant to this program, I will put him up there with some of the greats, not from a play style, statistic style, none of that. But what he's done for us here – can't be unmet like can't be measured i just don't know if the right situation presented itself that they don't go after it now about the trey holly thing guys on a i know brian kelly said on a and this is how things change very quickly in the court system last week brian kelly said that he thought that the case could be done on april the 17th the issue with that is is now trey holly's attorney has to push back Trey Holly's court date because he has a murder trial starting that same week. So he's going to have to push back Trey's court case. How long is that murder trial going to go on for? A week? Two weeks? I, I, I don't know. But God, let's say on the small side, it's a week to two weeks. So you go into May. Well, they have to go back to court to get a trial date. So they don't even have a trial date yet, and maybe some of these, these charges get dropped. I don't know. He still has two felony charges on him. So if you're getting into May to get a – if you go to court to May to get a court date, what if the court, court date is in June? What if the court date is in July? God forbid that they got to push that back for any reason. By the way, I will, I will tell you, any attorney on planet Earth will tell you, if you know one in your family, call them. If you know one of your friends is an attorney, call them. They will tell you, in criminal cases, a lot of times these things get kicked, the can gets kicked down the road so much. Let me give you an example from my own personal experience. In my past life, there was a trial that was going on that I was a part of. And in that trial... My wife got, and I, that's a whole different story, but I would get, I got subpoenaed for the same trial, I think seven times. We would come home and my wife would say, guess who came by today here? You, could, you got served in this case that you're working. Okay. It got kicked down the can seven times. The truth is, it's, it's very similar to the case that Trey Holly's going through. Guys, it took seven months from the first time I was subpoenaed to the last time I was subpoenaed. I do think it's very risky. My Knowing what I know about the court system, I think it's risky not going after somebody else. Now, here's the flip side of that. I am not Brian Kelly. I am not in that building every day. 
I know I don't know all the details that a Brian Kelly would know. So he can have a vast majority of things that he knows that I do not. Obviously, he does. But I do think that there's a risk there. And I, I for listen, man, you can't go in with three scholarship backs. Last year, you know who did that? Georgia. Guys, they were using a tight end H-back slash wide receiver as a running back at times last year, get one, two carries. When you do something like that and a back goes down, it puts a lot of strain on your running backs. Here's why I also don't know if 100% I think that I think Brian Kelly could have been bluffing. Let me tell you why. Because last week, last Saturday, he was asked about the Caleb Jackson in the running back room. The first sentence that he said was this. Boy, that room's really thin, isn't it? That is a quote in quote. So he says that it leads me to believe if the right situation arose, that they would do it. I can be wrong. I'm not perfect. I have been wrong before. I have been wrong on the show. We'll continue to be wrong on the show at times. I think 95% were right, but 90%, 90, 95%, there is times where I am. Maybe I'm wrong in being uh, um, worried about that position. Now, let me rewind. Let me put that all in a little bit of a bow for you because I know what's going to happen. Oh my God! Blake said they were not good at running back. It literally happened with our Garrett Nussmeyer thing last night again. And I went back and listened to it to make sure I didn't say anything that was factually inaccurate, and I did not. What you just heard, or what you heard, should not be the following. It should not be that that room's not going to be stacked. The room has stupid talent. Ungodly talent. I think Caleb Jackson's a beast. I think Gay, I think Kane Durham, day one, jo- June the 1st, when Kane Dur- Durham walks through that door, the locker room changes. He is an alpha. I will tell you, when I saw that young man in Dallas with his teammates, and when his teammates show up late, he let them know about it. Like, hey, man, when you commit, I hope everybody shows up late for your ass. The kid is an alpha. I don't, I, I'll be real with you. I, I, I got very, I'm very, very, very high on Caden Durham. You need another back for depth. Malachi Lane, the walk-on, maybe he can be serviceable in a pinch, and maybe that's why you're leaning on that. But, and God willing, God willing, Trey Holly comes back because there's a reason why. Let me, and let me wrap the Trey Holly thing up in a bow, too. God, I knew we were going to have to come back to this. The second degree murder charge was dropped on Trey Holly. He was in, uh, he was acquitted, or the grand jury did what d- decided not to indict. I should say, he was he's not going to get indicted on that. But they're still going to trial on the other two. Trials can be messy, y'all. They can be messy. They can be prolonged. Again, I do not know all the details. I have not actually dug into it enough point by point by point by point. I'm not getting every single detail on Trey Holly's life here. But what I will tell you is I just don't have faith in the court system getting this done and resolved easily. Now, there is a chance there is a chance where both charges that remain with him, aggravated criminal damage to property and uh, illegal, aggravated illegal use of a firearm, I think those two could be dropped to misdemeanors. The question becomes, if he pleads guilty to those two misdemeanors, is LSU going to allow him to be back? I think that that could be a case. Let me explain. 
Brian Kelly said that we're going to fight with the university or fight for Trey Holly when it goes to appeal with uh, Trey Holly, which means I think that there's a chance that both of them are going to get dropped to, dropped down to misdemeanors. I think he's going to plead no contest, and it's they're going to wash it, and it might not go to trial. If he does that and LSU allows him to come back, that can happen within a month. The question becomes, does he want to plead no contest? I know that's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo, all that bullshit, but it's definitely worth hearing that. I, I just, it, it's just my opinion, man. And, and look, Frank can disagree with me clearly. So can BK clearly. I still think they're doing an amazing job. Look at the talent that they've brought in in that position. Ungodly. Uh, JT Lindsay got an offer the other day. You got the number one running back in the country committed to you. So all I'm saying here, all I would say is, I don't worry about the position when it comes to pure talent. It just comes down to numbers for me. By the way, I will let you, I will remind you. Remember when Noah Kane came in last year for that Florida game and caught a touchdown pass? Hadn't played all year. Guys, what if you're in a game against Florida and you need a and you need a fourth back and that's Malachi Lane? Not not papooing on Malachi Lane, but what if that is Malachi Lane? And by the way, guys, getting the the magic number next year is ten. In the regular season, the magic number is ten. If you get to ten, you are in. Let me repeat that. Win ten. You're in, in the SEC. So, I will remind you, these close games, like, guys, if you beat Ole Miss last year and you have a 12-team playoff, you're in. You can lose to Bama. You can lose to Florida State. What you can't have happen is in a game like Ole Miss, that you have a critical job by a running back like Caleb Jackson and the flat when you're trying to get a first down. Those type of things cannot happen. All right. Um, another thing. Greedy Vance went into the portal today from Florida State. Edna Carr. There's going to be a debate. I I know that there are going to be other DBs that leave, but there's going to be a debate with him if there hasn't already been a debate with him. I think, and maybe you guys have seen it on social media, for whatever reason, Alabama thinks that they're getting him. Guys, I will tell you, if a kid from this state can play at Bama, he can play here. Even if he never does play, you don't want a rival getting a kid from your own state. A team that you're going to be competing for a playoff spot with. Older player experience, I don't think that he makes a massive change. I don't even think that he plays here, really, truthfully. But you just, you know, it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they go up to corner, maybe they don't. We'll see. Uh, some other things that Brian Kelly said. I don't know if he meant Whit Weeks or West Weeks. But the biggest thing that I took away from here, maybe he didn't mean West Weeks. I think he did mean West. He said that West Weeks has not had a good spring camp. He's had a great spring camp. Hmm. When you say something like that, when a head coach like Brian Kelly, who doesn't often – Get to a place where he uses the G word. Guys, I, I, he does not use that G word a lot. Now, he, came pay, he campaigned for Jaden Daniels when he used the word a lot, but Jaden Daniels was great. Jaden Daniels was elite. When, and I don't want to come out of this in a spring, but when a head coach comes out and says a guy has been great, then what? So... I thought that that was very uh, appealing to me. 
Also, he talked about the defensive staff and all the, you know, the connection that they have and all of them being where I've worked together at, at some point or another. Thought that was key. But I got to bring up one last thing before I get to your comments. Okay. This is the third straight time that we've had Brian Kelly in a press conference that he's talked about the backup quarterback situation. Unprompted. Not all unprompted. The one Saturday wasn't unprompted. But the two before that were unprompted. Now, Brian Kelly said today that Ricky Collins and A.J. Swan are battling, and you're going to see a lot of them. He's sending a message. Brian Kelly is sending a message to Ricky Collins. I think we're in for a little intense battle on Saturday, to be honest with you. And Ricky needs to perform. If I'm Ricky Collins, I put everything in. I, I would run. I, I, I would throw it all over the place. I would do what I needed to do. Don't leave anything to chance. I don't know what that means yet from BK. I'll be real with you. I don't know what I don't know why he keeps talking about it. And I, I understand that, you know, obviously if Garrett goes down, it's a big deal who the quarterback's going to be. I will be real with you. I don't think any of the three quarterbacks, scholarship quarterbacks, are ready. I still believe that A.J. Swan would go in because of experience, but A.J. Swan has not had a, 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 a great spring game or spring. He's dropped way, way too many snaps. He's made some good decisions. I'll give him this. He's made some good decisions. Doesn't have a bad arm, but he's just been clunky. And is the clunkiness because he is playing with a new team, he is playing a new system, he's trying to learn the plays, learn running back and handoffs, that can definitely be something. But just right now, he's been a little bit clunky, so it's going to be a good battle. All right, let's get to some of your comments here. Oh, we got a lot. Okay. Uh, Justin says, I remember you said a while back that you didn't think any of them was uh, going to be or do enough to keep Bryce off their backs once he came in. I still do not. I, I still do not believe that they will. And that's why I'm that's why I'm really intrigued by Brian Kelly bringing it up today again unprompted. Because what? who is he sending the signal to? I personally think he's sending the signal to Ricky Collins. Because what signal is he sending to A.J. Swan? Get back in the portal, you stink. No, he's not doing that. Because you don't get a kid like A.J. Swan and flip him from South Carolina literally seconds before he commits to South Carolina and Joe Sloan goes and gets him if you don't want his experience factor, that 1,000% is a, is a, a call out to Ricky Collins. 1,000%. I'm not even get like, covering BK, watching everything, covering this team, I'm telling, that is a call out to your backup quarterback. I hope Ricky performs. I hope he does good, but I don't think that any of them can keep off Bryce Underwood. Uh, Cole Adams says, BK said that he knows that Trey Holly is a good kid. I think a lot will be explained to the public and Trey will be back. I'm not saying, so Cole, let me expound on that too. I don't, I'm not saying Trey did do it. I never, I never once said other than the first night that all this went down, I came on the show and said, I had very vast skepticisms about the case that, that happened. You know, like the sheriff coming out and saying that he has ballistics. I've gone through this before. You're not Christian Bell in the dark night. You're not cutting out, you know, chunks of brick and bringing it back to your billion-dollar lab to run ballistics. Seven eyewitnesses saying the same stuff, all having the same story. That's bullshit. That's flat-out bullshit. So I don't, I'm not saying Trey Holly is innocent. I'm not saying he's guilty. I have a lot of skepticisms. But all of that being said, it doesn't change anything. Not one thing, not one iota, nothing changes in reference to how court cases are messy. Like I told you, 
my life situation, when you are given that many, or you're given a, guys, they're going to court in May, which got to be packed, pushed back from April 17th because his attorney has another murder trial. Guys, a murder trial can go on for two weeks to a month. So he might not even get a court date until April, uh, May the 10th. That goes into June or July. Now, there are so many different things that can happen with this. I don't know any of them. I, I In reference to, I don't know what's going to happen, I should say. I think Trey Holly is a good kid. But I don't know if you can risk it. What if he doesn't win? And those are questions that I don't have any answers to. And I, I am coming out and telling you, I don't know everything going on with the situation. Hear me and hear me now. This will be the fourth time I've said it. I clearly don't know everything that they know. Clearly. But I'm bringing you through a process that if shit hits the fan, which, going to throw this out there, with this team, shit clearly hits the fan a lot of times. Let's not act like that we have not been in bad situations before. You literally have right one right now with defensive tackle. You probably thought that Mason Smith was coming back and that you would bring in Dominic McKinley. Well, when he goes into the draft, then what? Then Mason Taylor, uh, Mason Smith, excuse me, says, I didn't know Bo Davis was coming. That's horseshit. They told you he was coming back, or he was coming here. So, yeah. Oh, I like this one. Because Rian says basketball question, but do you think the team is going to be improved next year? Because Matt McMahon has been moving in the portal and with some solid freshmen coming in. So let me pull this up right quick to Rian. Um, I want to bring this up. Yes. 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 Can you all bring up, see, the interns, man, they're in my they're in my. Yes, I want I, I want Spears's thing on the screen. Okay. <laughs> yes, you can bring it up. Yep, it's right there in the folder. Sorry, hold on. Very, very unprofessional. Yes, the Twitter link. Okay. All right. So today, uh, LSU got a commitment out of the portal by Jordan Sears, 5'11 point guard from UT Martin, who averaged 21 points per game last year, had six assists, four rebounds, and also had 1.2 steals per game committed to LSU. I will tell you, man, um, this is, at least for me, this is a pretty big pickup for Matt McMahon. I saw people getting like, oh, we got to go to mid-majors to get players. Yeah, the SEC Player of the Year was at a mid-major last year, geniuses. Here's the thing that we're learning in college basketball over the last decade. Teams that have older players, which you will have older players on your team next year, accompanied by guys, and, and not just old players, but older players, older players that have played together. Guys, UConn is winning because they got they got dudes that are around each other. Now, they go in the portal and all that kind of stuff. But they got old dudes that have been playing together for a long time. Here's another thing. I'm going to give you a hot take. I like this Jordan Sears kid. I think he can play. I think you're making the tournament next year. Matt McMahon got more out of that roster last year than he should have. He got every ounce or every drop out of that out of that juice. He's going to have better talent. In my opinion, this kid is better than Jalen Cook. I don't think it's even a, even a debate or choice or thought. So, yes to the question, I think that they're going to be much better. I think they're going to make a tournament run. I really do believe that. I really, really, really do. So, good on them. Big time pickup. I don't think that they're done, by the way. I don't. And they got some talented freshmen coming in. So I think that this basketball team is 100% going to be better. All right, Penn Jones with a super chat. $4.99 super chat. Thank you so much, Penn. Says, I think next year will be a hell of a battle between Hurley and Underwood. 
uh, talking about the quarterback. Um, you know what's crazy? You want to hear something crazy? Colin Hurley will be here next year, hypothetically. Let's give a hypothetical. And thank you, Penn, for the Super Chat. Um, Bryce Underwood will be older than him or around the same age. <laughs> and Hurley's only already been here for a year. Um, to your question. Maybe, maybe, you know, I, I think that there are some people that are, are, are down on Hurley. I am not necessarily one of them. I think the kid can really spin it. Actually, guys, he can really spin it. He's 17. He's 17. You, uh, he, here's my opinion. I think the kid needs to mature. I, I think that the kid needs to be in a system for three years because he can have five years, be in a system two, three years, mature, as my grandma would say, mature, and then if you want to hit the portal, hit the portal. That's the best-case scenario for him. Best-case scenario for him because he does have a lot of talent. The kid can spin it. And I think he'll get better with accuracy and decision-making because, guys, I got to be real with you. The kid's got – an. I do believe he's got a better arm than anybody's giving him credit for. I've seen him. He's just made some bad decisions. So, he can spin it now. He can spin it. Um, Justin Harris says, I'm a fan of Harley as well. Can't keep them all, which does suck. I think Garrett stays both years. He might. Now, that would definitely be the best case scenario for Bryce Underwood. Because if that happens and he sits behind Garrett Nussmeyer, I think it would benefit him. It would benefit LSU, too. All right. Let me take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll wrap up with some Tennessee and preview some Tennessee baseball. We'll do that next. All of you stay with us. Guys, you might know my good friend Carol Falls and all the great service that he provides over at State Farm. He is your good neighbor after all. But did you know State Farm has surprisingly great rates as well? Along with a great neighbor service, State Farm agent Carol Falls has surprisingly great rates for everyone inside the state of Louisiana. So call him today at 985-395-4300, 985-395-4300 for all of those surprisingly great rates on auto, home, and life insurance needs. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to the State Farm underwriting requirements. By the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com. Whether you've been injured in an accident, you're preparing for a future with your estate planning, you're getting ready to close in on a real estate deal, or you're about to welcome a new addition through adoption into your family, or you're facing criminal charges, you need very experienced attorneys, and that is what the Drake Williams Law Firm will be able to to do for you in navigating the legal system. The door to their cozy office in historic downtown Ponchatoula has been open since 1981. They have helped thousands and thousands of Louisiana families and individuals win cases, close on real estate deals, and regain that peace of mind. Their lawyers over at the Drake Williams Law Firm, Ernie Drake III, Ryan J. Williams, and Summer Vignair are very determined, compassionate, and dedicated to their craft. It's the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com. Give them a call today at 985-386-7600. Tell them your good friend Blake Rafino at AYS. Sent you on by. Bayou Daiquiri at Bayou Bowling Go is owned and operated locally by Steve and Lisa Bean. You can find them at 1512 North Highway 190 in Covington, Louisiana. That's 1512 North Highway 190 in Covington. The North Shore's first crawfish drive through is about to step it up another notch by bringing you drive through daiquiris as well. You can call in your order today at 985-888-1914, 985-888-1914, because you know what? Daiquiris and crawfish, it's a Louisiana thing. J&J &J has protected Louisiana homes and businesses for over 60 years. We call them today, make the pets go away. J&J &J exterminating. Yeah. Rafino and Joe Show is brought to you by Homefield Apparel, which is the best without a doubt 
premium collegiate apparel brand that is out there. They have over 150 different colleges that you can choose from, whether you're an Illinois fan or a Rutgers fan, maybe you're an LSU fan like Blake, or maybe you're an Alabama fan, whatever it is, even Idaho. They have so many different designs for so many different football programs that I can guarantee you're going to find some great stuff to help root for your favorite team. I've already gotten my Notre Dame stuff. Blake has his LSU stuff. Make sure you head on over to homefieldapparel.com to check out your team's collection of clothing apparel that they have on the website. And when you do so, when you check out, make sure you use promo code Rafino Joe to get 15% off your order. That is R U F F I N O Rafino Joe. Head on over to homefieldapparel.com and get your college gear today. The first person in the 2024 NFL draft that should hear that sound should be Jaden Daniels, but I digress. Guys, I got to tell you something. Tennessee might be the best hitting team that we've seen all year, not even remotely close. Blake Burke, Kavaris Tears, Billy Amick, Dylan Drelling, Christian Moore, Dean Curley, Dalton Bargo. The list goes on and on. Guys, they legitimately... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Have eight dudes in their lineup right now that are hitting over 315. By the way, all of them have had at least 27 starts on the season. That's not even to uh, uh, talk about Cannon Peoples who also is going to be in that lineup this weekend, and Hunter Inslee. Uh, Inslee. Guys, it is going – this weekend has the potential to just be really rough for the guys on the mound if you're not locked in. Blake Burke is one of the most dangerous hitters in the country. So is Kavaris Tears. Because you have two guys batting above 410. One has 11 home runs. One has 10. By the way, Billy Amick, who has kind of been nicked up. I, you know, we'll, let's see what's going on with him, too. But he's hitting 367 with 10 long balls. That's a small park. And they want revenge because you knocked him out of an Omaha last year. They are, if you're not monitoring their social media, they're pretty fired up that you're in town, buddy. Now let's go and go to pitching because their Friday night guy is not going to be going on Friday. They have gone TBA. Maybe he does go. I don't know. But LSU and Jay Johnson announced that they're going with Gage Jump on Friday to counteract in Drew Beam versus Luke Homan, which is going to be a really good battle. But I look at them and say, Drew Breen, Eight starts on the year, sub 3.5 ERA. Nate Sneed, sub 3.29 ERA. And Koki Riley put this out earlier, who covers LSU baseball for the advocate. He put out the rotation for this weekend. Gage Jump will be on Friday. Uh, Luke Holman versus Drew Beam on Saturday. But Sunday, you have uh, Xander Seacrest. Who has a 337 ERA? He's 1-0 in 26 innings pitched versus TBA for LSU. I, I, I don't know where you get the win. I, I legitimately have no clue where you get the win. Maybe Saturday and maybe Holman gives you enough. Maybe it's Friday. Maybe Gage Jump can have a really good game. Griffin Herring can come in and close it out for you. Maybe. I, I think a win for this weekend would be for you to grab one because I don't know if you I, I don't know if you can win this series. Now, last night we talked about you gotta burn your ships, you gotta take no for an answer. I am not going to accept, I'm just not going to accept that this is going to be the outcome. 
It's do or die for LSU baseball. And it, it kills me. It pains me to say this. But if you're going to turn it around, it starts now against arguably the best, one of the hottest hitting teams in the country. You got to burn your ships. And you got to do everything you can to make sure that you come away home with one. Because then you, you know, you can beat an Ole Miss, you can beat a Mizzou. By the way, Charlie Condon hit his 22nd home run in 30 games. Dude's insane. Here's my prediction before we get out of here. I don't I think you lose the series. I think you go two and one. I just I I don't know where the wins are coming from. I, I don't by any stretch of the imagination have any faith at all on anything that you can win on Sunday. That is a moral, that is a victory for you on Sunday. Because until this team shows me that they can be competitive on a Sunday, I will never pick them on a Sunday until they can prove it. I don't know. Luke Holman's not been great on the road. He's been serviceable. He's been oh, good. Hadn't been great. And then you got Gage Jump on Friday. By the way, that's not, we're not even talking about the hitting. I'm just talking about, I, I, I just don't, I, I don't know where the wind comes in. Uh, maybe Friday, maybe. I, I think you're going up a up, uphill battle when you go against Drew Bream on Saturday. So we'll see, man. We'll see. I think you're losing. We'll be live tomorrow night either way. Live tomorrow night either way. So we'll see. We shall see. All right. David Woodard says, you write John Sibley Butler, but the okay, that's not to us. Uh, Ace Down Creole says, Blake, you sound like you're talking about uh, talking about Nuss when you said Hurley can spin it but needs to make better decisions. Um, Hurley doesn't make those types of bad decisions. I think that if the decisions that Hurley makes is – He's not gonna. He's not gonna. He's not a gunslinger necessarily. He just if the if where you're supposed to go with the ball on your first read is not there, he will still throw it. Whereas Garrett will, hey man, if I got one on one coverage or I think I got one on one coverage on Chris Hilton, I'm throwing that bitch. She. The different type of thing. I see what you're saying. I, I don't. Uh, I don't think Hurley's that kind of player. He will sling it though. Kid can really throw, man. Kid can really throw it. Uh, Greg says I predict that we get swept. <laughs> I feel this team has lost it. God, that sucks. And I'd still keep Jones in the leadoff. Because you can't get let the kid be on base because Tommy Tanks is coming up. I, I would roll up, I would legitimately roll out other than shortstop, which I think that they they're not gonna let uh Kuzak. I don't think that he's gonna get another start in the SEC. Uh I think Braswell will go. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's going to be tough. We'll see you tomorrow and talk about it, though. Y'all have a good one, man. Peace.